This week on the Computer Chronicles, we'll take you trade show hopping. First, a visit to the Winter Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. We'll show you DVD, the new digital video disc format that will soon replace CD-ROMs. And we'll look at the new color handheld computers, plus new computer peripherals designed for preschoolers. Then we'll take you to San Francisco for the 1996 Macworld Expo and a look at the latest hardware and software goodies for the Macintosh. All this and more coming up next on the Computer Chronicles. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Hewlett Packard Personal Computers, developing PCs for business. Additional funding from the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that floppy. Consumer Electronics is now a $68 billion a year business from personal computers to home satellite dishes. If it uses electricity and it has a CPU or two in it, you're bound to find it here at the world's largest exhibit of consumer electronics products, Winter CES. Yeah, CES is an interesting show because in the past, the computer companies have not really been big here. However, this particular year, uh, Compaq, IBM, and Apple have decided that the consumer, of course, is like number one uh, in their site for uh, potential customers. So they're here in fairly big force, trying to make the consumer world aware of the fact that the PC, which is sat in the business world or sat in the high-end home uh, productivity side, is now becoming more of a device that could be used in the home. IBM used CES to introduce the first home PCs using the new faster Intel Pentium processors, running at 150 or 166 megahertz. The new Aptivas also come standard with a 6x CD-ROM drive for top multimedia performance. The capability of the audio and video on the PC today is much superior to anything that we have ever had in the past. So when you see a movie on a PC or you run a game that has movie clips on a PC, you get the full stereo sound, you get TV-like quality of the product. In short, it is a home theater. All of the new Aptiva models include MPEG video capability, built-in voice navigation, a 28.8 modem, and wavetable audio. Ironically, these new powerhouse multimedia PCs are coming out at the same time that other companies are touting new low-cost, simple internet terminals. But Garcia says the consumers want more than just access to the net. There are a lot of applications that can be gotten from the internet. The PC can also, of course, attach to the internet. But the thing that a PC can give you is a combination of an audiovisual product, a communications product, a home productivity product, all of that thrown into one. One of the coolest new PC products from IBM is this color palm top computer called the PC-110, shown here with a PCMCIA card that turns it into a video conferencing station. The PC-110 is only available in Japan now. One way to make PCs more popular is to make it easier to move information in and out of them. New forms of PC input was one of the big themes here at CES. For example, Naris Communications demonstrated their new flashback digital handheld voice recorder. You can easily transfer voice files into your PC by popping this memory module into a SoundLink PCMCIA adapter and then annotate a document with a sound file. The system also lets you easily edit your voice messages. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'll play that back. One, two, three, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. I've left something out. I can go back and insert it. I simply play. One, two, three, four. Hold down pause until I hear a tone. That tone means we're in edit mode. So now these buttons mean different features to the microcontroller inside. I hold down record. Five, six. And play it back as one message. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Texas Instruments was also trying to make it easier to get your organizer and your PC in sync. 
This is a docking station that allows you to download information from your TI organizer into your PC. And Polaroid was trying to make it easier for you to get photos into your computer. They used an Elvis look-alike to show how easy it is to input Polaroid snapshots using their new PhotoPad scanner. And AOL was showing off a new online feature that lets you send photos online. Once you get the image into your PC, you can easily send it to a friend using the PictureWeb service on the World Wide Web. The address is PictureWeb.com. If you're trying to figure out how to get the photos out of your computer, Fargo Electronics was demonstrating its new PhotoFun, a high-quality color photo printer that uses thermal dye sublimation technology. PhotoFun sells for under $500. All of these new ways to use a home PC are part of the growing industry trend to reposition the computer as a necessary home appliance. It's a multi-purpose, multi-user device. It can be used by the kids, it can be used by the parents, by the teenagers, and it could be used for business. And the multi-dimensional aspect of the PC is going to be the, one of the big keys for the next three years. We're going to say it's not necessarily appliance, but what it is, it's this multi-dimensional device that allows me to do many, many things. And that's going to be one of the driving forces that brings PCs into more homes. There were some exotic input-output devices on display here at CES. Chinon introduced these cool cyber shades for serious game players who want to see the action in 3D. And if you're tired of tangled cables and cords, Vivitar and Victor Max were showing off new wireless joysticks. Coolest of all was this new Zahn game controller from Perception Systems. It uses special motion sensing chips and software to translate your body moves into computer input. The Zahn game controller will be available for the PC and for video game consoles later this year at a price of about $100. There wasn't a lot of software on display here at CES, but there were quite a few new ways of selling software. This man isn't buying a candy bar. This vending machine dispenses computer programs. Software Vend, soon to be found in malls and airports, offers over 2,000 shareware programs for $5 a pop. The best part about this software vending machine is that you can actually preview the software before you buy it. Another new approach to selling software is the Internet Shopping Network. It's a 24-hour online shopping service. They offer overnight delivery, or you can get immediate gratification by downloading the software from their website. A Japanese company called NTT Data took a different approach to the online shopping mall. They demonstrated a new multimedia network service called the Virtual Mall, using the look and feel of a 3D town, making it natural and easy to find the shops and services you want. The virtual mall will be available first in Japan and then go online in the States later this year. With all these new easy ways to buy and play with computer software, how do you control your kids? Well, a company called MindMaster has developed a product called Computer Allowance to do just that. The software allows parents to set time limits on gameplay or online use. The software does give kids a warning before time's up so you can save your game before the system times out. Coming up next, a look at digital video discs, eight gigabytes on one compact disc. Last year, the hot new consumer electronics product were these satellite dishes, DSS, digital satellite system receivers. In fact, DSS was the fastest growing new consumer electronics product in history. But that was last year. For 1996, forget DSS, DVD will be the hot new acronym. These little digital video discs. The most important thing that took place at this show was the fact that we saw about 15 manufacturers discussing their DVD strategy, the digital video. And this is where you take the digital video or the CD-ROM from where we are now at, at 650 megabytes and on one side and move it up to eight gigabytes on one side or nine gigabytes on one side and the dual side take it up to 18. Virtually every major electronics manufacturer was showing off new DVD technology, including RCA, Samsung, Pioneer, and Toshiba. And the good news is that for once, all manufacturers have agreed to one digital video standard. 
When a consumer goes in to purchase a DVD-ROM, a DVD movie player, there will be one standard, one format that will govern everything. This is the first time that everybody in the software community, everybody in the computing community, and everybody in the consumer electronics community all got together and decided on one single format, one single standard. The huge capacity of DVD is great for putting movies on your PC, but it can do a lot more than that. This disc in a DVD-ROM has up to 14 times the storage capacity of a current CD-ROM. Imagine that, putting an entire encyclopedia like Encarta and incorporating entire speeches rather than just clips of speeches. In a future digital environment, multimedia environment, this DVD movie will be able to take out of our DVD player and put into our DVD-ROM on our computer and play it back. So DVD will be the realization of true multimedia. Digital video discs offer more than just massive storage on one CD. The DVD format also offers improvements in image quality. The video of DVD is component video. The resolution of DVD is three times that of a VHS player. DVD is better than DSS. It's better than Laserdisc. This will be the next revolution in high quality imaging. Now besides the high quality picture that's part of DVD, there's also the performance and the versatility. This disc enables us to watch movies in three different versions. A pan and scan 4x3 picture, a pan and scan letterbox picture, widescreen, as well as a special widescreen version for future widescreen products. And there is so much room for code on a DVD that future movies designed for PCs will finally be able to take advantage of meaningful interactivity. There is full compatibility with MPAA ratings. If you have an R version of a disc, R players, you can program for what material you will allow to pass through. If you select PG-13 and you have an R disc, it will not play on our player. Now, one, taking that one step further, in a future interactive environment where you would have multiple endings, you could theoretically get one version of Batman that may be, for example, an R version but the different versions would actually be mastered onto the disc. So if you wanted to see a G or a PG-13 version, you select that on the player, and it, with interactivity and multiple storylines, you could literally just watch the G or the PG-13 version on one disc. DSS, digital satellite systems, were still a hot topic at CES. RCA promised a new high-end digital VCR, which will be able to record from your DSS and maintain the high audio and video quality. And if you didn't buy a direct broadcast satellite dish because you travel a lot, check this out. RF Link designed a portable dish with its own suitcase so you can take it with you wherever you go. RCA and Gold Star demonstrated new digital video cameras, and though Canon's ES5000 video camera isn't digital yet, it's innovative because the camera zooms in and out and focuses automatically by following your eye movements. One of the key themes, of course, of this entire conference is digital anything. Video, audio, uh, animation, computer technology, everything is moving into a digital. So what you're going to eventually see over time will be a proliferation of the digital video recorders or the digital VCR or the digital whatever. And all of those become critical parts of their, our next generation technology. The key, of course, is it's just going to take time. What you're seeing here is the introduction of the digital video camcorders, but they're 3000 bucks. You know, it's not a consumer product yet. Uh, but within the next three to five years, everything moves over to a digital format. Finally, a company called Beery Systems used digital technology in a new useful way. Do you forget what network is on which channel number on your cable system? Beery Systems solves that problem with the tune-in remote control. You can pre-program in the stations by their network letters and recall them that way without having to remember or look up the channel number. Coming up next, Compaq teams up with Fisher-Price. Up until now, most consumer electronics products have been marketed toward men and toward executives. That is all changing now with a whole array of new products like this one, the Daisy. This is a digital voice-activated organizer and diary being targeted toward teenage girls. A company called Her Interactive was also going after the young female consumer. They introduced a CD-ROM called McKinsey & Company. 
The software teaches teens budgeting skills through fun activities like shopping for clothes. The major new target consumer for computer products was preschoolers. And the big news here was an alliance by Compaq and Fisher Price to develop new computer peripherals designed specifically for toddlers. The new line is called Wonder Tools. This, for example, is the Wonder Tools Cruiser, designed to look like a car console. The engine starts with the turn of a key, and youngsters drive through various computer adventures using the steering wheel and throttle to control direction and speed. There's even a kiddie cell phone so youngsters can chat with computer characters. For Compaq, working with a company like Fisher Price was a lesson in learning how to design for kids. The, the neatest thing that we found, because you know we build uh, PCs ourselves, is to watch how Fisher Price engineers all these toys to be essentially uh, breakproof. So that when you when you look at the Wonder Cruiser and you see the little joystick, the first thing that comes to mind is, God, that really looks uh, uh, fragile. But the way Fisher Price has designed it is that if you pull on it too hard, it just pops out, and you push it right back in, and it's reusable again. It's effectively breakproof. And that's really been uh, a phenomenal experience for us as a computer vendor to watch someone, someone different take a, an entirely new approach to designing hardware that makes it uh, usable for that young age group. But we typically think of computer components as being very fragile and we don't want our child to get too close to them. In addition to the cruiser, there's a Wonder Tools keyboard with colorful oversized keys designed for little hands. The Kitty keyboard works with any Windows software. The other major change for Compaq is getting into the software business. The new programs designed to run with the Wonder Tools products are coming out of a new Compaq software division. This is brand new for, for Compaq. In some ways, we have been in the software business before because we actually do a lot of development for our platform products in terms of software and adding value. But this is the first time Compaq has come out as a separate software effort, uh, and our business unit is actually charged with generating a profit and, and revenue for the company from a software standpoint. So that's very exciting for us as a business unit to be involved in this side of uh, the uh, the compact side of the house and actually try and generate revenue. It's very exciting for us. One of the first new titles from Compaq is Cyber Grannies, where 26 gentle grannies teach the alphabet and words in a 3D world. I'm Grandma Betty, and this is my bakery where we make fresh bread and cakes every day. Use these hands to look around. Packard Bell is also getting into the software business with a new division called Packard Bell Interactive. PBI rolled out six new titles for children, including an interactive version of an old favorite, Goldilocks and the Three Bears. But first we'll check in his. Since you finished checking yours, look in mine, there it is. IBM was also moving into the kiddie software market with several multimedia titles, including a CD-ROM version of the Jungle Book. Children play the game through voice commands, thanks to IBM's speech recognition technology. Aha! Good show. And for the young and the young at heart, IBM showed off Quest for Fame. Wannabe rock stars can use the new virtual pick to strum virtually anything and come up with cool guitar sounds. Apple Computer was also looking at the growing home market. They gave sneak previews of their new technology called Pippin. This is almost a throwback to the Commodore 64 days. The Pippin box connects to your TV set, allowing you to play CD-ROM games and access the internet without having to buy a full-fledged computer and monitor. You obviously don't have as much flexibility, but you still get a lot of the feature sets. So Pippin is an interesting example of a device that would let you for 500 bucks, 600 bucks, run all of the Mac software on a television and that kind of a hybrid device has potential. In fact, it's one that we think could actually propel Apple into a whole new level of computer users or home uh, who won't afford the $1,000, $2,000 computer. Pippin is a key part of the new Apple strategy to get a larger share of the PC marketplace. And to do that, they are teaming up with partners who understand consumer electronics. Because I, uh, the important thing is, is to reach the entire installed base of color TV people. So it is way bigger than us and our customer base. And for that, we need new industry partnerships to reach out. So we cannot 
we shouldn't compete with our own partners. And as the first licensee, such as Bandai and Mitsubishi, they help us reach a whole new range of people. Future licensees will help us reach whole new other ranges of people. So it'll be a much faster access to customers, much broader access, and much lower cost access than from a PC infrastructure. Coming up next, the wireless revolution at CES. One of the areas of explosive growth in consumer electronics products has been in wireless communications from cell phones to pagers. Now the latest technology wrinkle is a new kind of cordless phone that scrambles your voice to provide added privacy and security. Both Uniden and AT&T were demonstrating these new secure cordless phones. In the area of cellular phones, the emphasis at CES was on small and smaller. This is the CMRX100 from Sony. It's so small, there's no place for a mouthpiece. So Sony added a folding microphone arm on the side. At Motorola, people were wearing their new tiny cell phones. Maybe they're too big for an earring, but they are the smallest cell phones on the market. Tired of being weighed down by a pager and a cell phone, Motorola also introduced a mobile phone with a built-in pager. Skytel showed off its new two-way pager, allowing you to send simple messages back to people who paid you, select from a preset group of messages, or program your own. If you don't like carrying a pager, you may be interested in the new message watch from Seiko. You can receive phone numbers and simple messages like call office right on your wrist. Ever wonder what good a car alarm is when you're in a restaurant and can't hear the thing going off? Well, AutoPage introduced an AutoPager. The AP5500 pages you when your car alarm goes off. And this is a specialized pager for parents. This cute cat warns you if your child wanders more than 15 feet away from you. Just clip the cat onto your child and put the parent unit on your belt. And here we are in San Francisco at Macworld Expo. This was a strange kind of Macworld being held under the cloud of all kinds of bad news from Apple Computer. Big losses in the fourth quarter, executive shakeups, pending layoffs, but it didn't seem to matter to all the Mac heads inside the exhibit halls. Still lots of neat new products being introduced for Mac users, so let's go inside and take a look. One of the headliners here at Macworld was a prototype of Apple's new PC compatibility card for the PCI-based Power Macs. The PC card features either a Pentium or a Cyrix 586 CPU. While you can run PC software using a program like Soft Windows, performance is usually slow compared to this hardware solution. There are some software products that offer a similar capability, but it's basically, uh, if you can, it's the software is an emulation, so it won't run as fast as the hardware. It works just fine. It's just that the hardware will run faster uh, if you need the speed. I definitely suggest this is the, the way to go. Former Apple exec Jean-Louis Gasset used Macworld to unveil the first product from his new company. The B-Box features multiple PowerPC processors, an innovative new operating system, as well as advanced sound and graphics capabilities. With the Mac still the favored platform for high-end design work, there were several peripherals introduced here at Macworld. Canon showed off its new color laser beam printer, price tag $12,000, and NEC was offering a new desktop LCD monitor. The multi-sync LCDs start at $4,000, a price which might raise a few eyebrows, but it's about half the price of earlier versions. You wouldn't think there would be much of an opportunity for a new word processor, but WorldSoft was proudly demonstrating its new WorldWrite program. It can accommodate right-to-left languages like Hebrew, vertical input languages such as Chinese, as well as English. It's a tight program. You only need 2 megs of RAM and 7 megs on your hard drive. WorldSoft says it created the new word processor in response to feedback from computer users. The simple truth is that people have been coming to us saying that they're tired of Word. They don't want to deal with it anymore. It's too big. It's too fat. It launches too slowly. And uh, they're afraid of what's happening with, with uh, products such as WordPerfect. 
People want an alternative. People are coming to us saying they want a solution, and we're offering it to them. Microsoft demonstrated an add-on for MS Word for the Mac called Internet Assistant. It will automatically convert Word files to HTML format. It's expected to be available in a few months. One more company announced it was getting into the Mac clone business. Umax will soon be marketing the Super Mac brand. Umax was not concerned about all the bad news coming out of Apple. It's always disappointing to hear, you know, it's uh, the mothership, so to speak, having some trouble. But I think it's tactical problems. I don't think there's strategic problems in terms of, I mean, just the turnout here uh, at Macworld is showing that there's still a lot of interest in the Mac OS platform. And I think that's really part of the licensing strategy is to strengthen that. That's it for our look at Macworld and the Consumer Electronics Show. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Stuart Chaffet. Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by Hewlett Packard Personal Computers, developing PCs for business. Additional funding from the Software Publishers Association, providers of educational materials to help manage software. Don't copy that plot. Videotape copies of all Computer Chronicle shows are available for $32.50 please order by show number and topic. And for more detailed information about the series, guests, and products featured, you can also order a subscription to the Chaffee Letter. In each issue, Stuart provides his unique insights and thoughts about the fast-changing world of personal technology. Videotapes and the Chaffee Letter can be ordered by calling 1-800-800-9520 or by writing us at the Computer Chronicles. Love is tender, love is sweet. Join us, I'll just take vengeance.